Welcome to Distributed Systems and Blockchain in the News. My name is Thomas Bocek and this is a short weekly summary of interesting news that is relevant for my Distributed Systems and Blockchain lecture here at the Eastern University of Applied Sciences. In the DeFi lecture, I mentioned that MakerDAO, the creator of the stablecoin DAI, rebranded to Sky and now is considering another potential brand change due to community feedback, as written in this article here. The initial rebrand introduced SkyDollar USDS and Sky tokens as upgrades to their previous DAI and MKR tokens, with USDS quickly reaching a 1 billion supply and securing integrations with major DeFi platforms like Aave and Morpho. However, the founder has acknowledged community concerns about the token utility and confusion around the new branding structure, leading to three proposed options, maintaining Sky as the core brand, returning to the original maker identity, or creating a hybrid approach that centers maker while incorporating elements of the Sky ecosystem. And since it's a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, the final decision is to be determined through a community voting beginning of October 28th and November 4th. The next article is about cloud computing, that it can be cheaper in some cases not to use the cloud. It's the following article here, 37 Signals, the company behind productivity software like Basecamp has updated its projected savings from moving away from Amazon Web Service, AWS, to self-hosted infrastructure, now estimating $10 million in savings over five years. The company, known for its public stance on tech issues, invested around 800,000 US dollars in Dell servers, equipment and SSD disks to host its seven cloud-based apps and 10 petabytes of storage, arguing that the cloud's premium pricing no longer made sense for their stable workload. While there may be cases where it's cheaper not to use the cloud, I don't think that there is a cloud exit trend. You need to have a specific use case where a data center is actually cheaper. And while AWS has acknowledged competition from on-premise IT and companies like Red Hat and Citrix suggests a shift towards hybrid approaches, other experts argue that the cloud versus on-premise debate is oversimplified and that success depends more on proper architecture and clear goals than on choosing one approach over the other. The next article in lecture two in the news, I mentioned that Tor users were unmasked and this article sheds now a bit more light on this situation. It's the following article here. The investigation believed to be as Operation Liberty Lane, which is a joint operation of the United States, UK, Germany, resulted in four successful de-anonymization, including two RicoChat users, a TorChat program, and two other cases. According to experts, the de-anonymization process wasn't based on software vulnerabilities, but rather on timing analysis, particularly effective when there was low traffic on an Onion service. The number of surveilled Tor relays in Germany has increased significantly, though the de-anonymization process isn't instantaneous. This surveillance approach poses particular risk for services with intermittent traffic patterns, such as whistleblowing platforms, where user activity can be more easily isolated and tracked. So that means there is a chance to unmask Tor users. However, it seems that involves some the next article is about stablecoins. Stripe is now also in the stablecoin business. It's the following article here. The payment company Stripe has made its largest acquisition to date by purchasing Bridge, a stablecoin platform for 1.1 billion, an enormous deal in the crypto industry. 
Bridge provides software tools for companies to accept stablecoin payments and had previously raised $58 million in funding with its last valuation at $200 million US dollars. The acquisition expands Stripe crypto offerings, adding to its recent move to support USDC payments and its partnership with Coinbase to integrate the base layer 2 network. The Stripe CEO described stablecoins as a room temperature superconductor for financial services and is committed to building the world's best stablecoin infrastructure. The last article is about round robin DNS. It's the following article here. And uh, this we also discussed in the distributed systems lecture. The article tests how browsers and Cloudflare proxy behaves with round robin DNS. And I, of course, was curious too how it works exactly. So what is round robin DNS? Well, round robin DNS is a simple method of load balancing that allows multiple servers to be specified for a single domain or subdomain. And the author did an investigation using servers in the US, EU and Singapore with different clients to see how they handle multiple results for a DNS query. And these clients handled server selection differently. Safari, for example, and curl consistently choose the nearest server while Chrome and Firefox randomly select the server and stick with it until the browser restarts. When using Cloudflare's proxy, the service assigns uh, clients to random servers based on their IP address and maintains that assignment even if the server goes offline, which is most likely a bug as the author suggests, but not changing IP may not be optimal for performance as it doesn't account for server latency and availability. So currently there is a lot of things going on uh, with respect to stable coins. We had the MakerDAO rebranding and its launch of the new stablecoin USDS and now the purchase of the stablecoin platform by Stripe. And do not forget, in December, we will have here at OST 14 working stablecoin prototypes created by OST students.